In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Yoga, a layout framework from Facebook. Yoga is a framework that lets you lay things out pretty easily. It's actually cross-platform. They've got a iOS framework. We're going to do some examples with it. It's based off of the Flexbox model that we'll talk about a bit more. Before we get into things, start by dropping a like down below. Hit subscribe if you're new here. Let's open up Xcode and create a new project. So I've got Xcode here, we'll create a new project, I'm gonna stick with the app template under iOS. Let's call this layout example, since we're super creative here. Go ahead and continue, save it wherever you'd like. I shall toss it onto my desktop. And the first thing that we wanna do is bring in the yoga framework. We're gonna do that by using CocoaPods. So let's close Xcode, we're gonna open up Terminal, and I'm gonna CD into my desktop and then the layout example project folder we just created. Gonna type pod init to initialize CocoaPods. If you don't have CocoaPods already installed, I've got a video on how to do so, so start over there. We'll open up the pod file and bring in the framework. The framework is called Yoga Kit, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll do that, Yoga Kit, capital Y, capital K. And we'll type in here, pod install, to install it and bring it in. Now we, looks like we've successfully brought it in. We can open up our project folder and we'll open up the XC workspace that was generated for us. Let's expand this Xcode window and start talking about yoga. So we're going to work in the view controller today. We'll talk about what yoga actually does and more importantly, why it's actually worth even talking about and using. We'll just run this in a simulator to make sure everything is good to go. And it looks like it is. So yoga is basically a layout framework that allows you to lay things out without defining constraints in a declarative way. And it's based on the Flexbox model which is very common and prevalent in web development. So in the Flexbox model, what you can basically assume is you are floating content between uh, a grid system. So you can imagine that you might have a row of uh, boxes, let's say UI views, and you want one of them to be 50% of the row on the left and the other one's gonna be right next to it on the right. So you can align things, float things, and you can specify different weights for things to uh, dynamically expand and collapse to fill up layout sizes. Now it's a little hard to explain for those of you not familiar with Flexbox, so we're gonna actually do some examples. So let's go ahead and first and foremost, we're gonna unwrap the main view from this view controller since the view is nullable. So we'll say card let root view is going to be view, else we're gonna do nothing since we definitely need a view to get started. And we also want to import yoga kit up here that we brought in via CocoaPods. Next up, we're gonna create a function to set up our UI and we're gonna pass in a root view just like that. And after we've unwrapped this up here, we can go ahead and say setup UI passing in root view. So before we get into doing some fancy examples, let's start with the absolute basics. So yoga allows us to configure layout on every single thing that inherits from UI view. The way we go about doing that is simply by passing the view or referencing the view and saying configure layout. And this configure layout will give us a callback, a closure, if you will. And inside of this, we can specify things on this layout thing that we get. So for this, we're gonna say layout, and let's see, we'll go ahead and say flex direction. We're gonna want the root view to be a column. What that means is any sub views inside of this that we lay out, we want them to be positioned uh, vertically, so in a column. The next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is set a background color to this and just give it a run to see what has actually happened, if anything at all. So let me hit Command R, build and run. We should just see our pink view like so. Let's actually add something to this layout and I'll actually change this pink to just be a system background so it's less obnoxious. The first thing we'll add is a title. So this is gonna be a UI label. We're gonna set a text on here. Maybe we'll say text is going to be a yoga kit. And we'll also align said text to be centered and what we want to do is say title, configure layout, just like the root view up above, and we get this layout thing on here. 
Now we can say layout width is going to be 300. Now one important thing to understand is the dimensions that Yoga uses are YG values. If you look at the actual signature down here, it's a YG value. So sometimes if you reference other types of types, for example, if I want to say this is the entirety of our views width, self.view.frame.size.width, it's going to give me an error because it's expecting to be a YG value. Instead of using the entire width, we're just going to stick with 300 for the time being. I am also going to say layout.height will be 50. And perhaps we want this uh, title to be centered horizontally. Now we know that we need to add this label to our root view and that root view is what we've passed in. So I'll reference that I will add this like so. Let me give it a background color so we can see where it's actually placed before I center it here. And let's give it a run. We'll see it at the top left, presumably. Actually, in fact, we don't even see it. So the reason we don't see it is we actually need to say on our root view dot yoga, we want to apply the layout preserving origin false. This will basically apply all of the view layout to our uh, view. So let's see what's going on here. It looks like we are in fact crashing, which is not good to go. So let's see what's happening in our console and we shall resolve it together. So it looks like layout example terminating app due to NS invalid cannot enable for this view. Yoga is not enabled for this view. Ah, I forgot one very important thing. So whenever you configure layouts for a view, you need to actually specify is enabled. So this is something which I personally feel when you specify this should be done by default, but for whatever reason, Facebook decided not to do so. So just make sure to assign that property to be true, give it a run, and we'll now start to see our app not crash. And we'll also start to see at the top that blue UI label, which is our title label. So let's actually align this. How do you align it? We can just say align, and there's a couple options. We're gonna say align self to be centered. Pretty simple and boom, it's centered. Now we also see it's not respecting the safe area. So instead of using the inset for now, what I'll just go ahead and do is add a bit of top padding. So I'm gonna say padding top is perhaps maybe, I'll go with 80 and see what that looks like. All right, maybe actually even a bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and maybe say 100. And definitely looking a little better. Keep in mind that the padding is actually being applied to this element itself. So we could actually move the padding up here and we'll see the element itself get pushed down rather than the blue box expand. So let's get rid of this blue background color and let's do a little bit more of an interesting example with a dynamic layout with things showing up and disappearing. So the next thing we're gonna create up here is a container. Now this container is going to contain two views that are going to be positioned side by side horizontally. So it looks like my Xcode is deciding to be a little slow and it looks like it may have just crashed. So let me go ahead and close and reopen this really quickly. We'll force quit this and let's open up this project once more, bear with me. All right, so we're gonna create a container and this container is going to allow us to put things horizontally. So we'll say let container is going to be a UI view. This container, we're gonna to want to configure layout on it just like all the other views. Don't forget, layout is enabled, will be true. Now I actually wanna see the container's uh, border. So what I'll do is I'm gonna set a border uh, width to be one and I'm also going to set a border color. And this will be UI color label dot CG color. And of course I'll want to add this as a sub view to our root view, we'll say add sub view container. Now the important thing in the layout piece here is we're gonna say that the flex direction of this is a row. We're also gonna say that we're going to justify content to be centered and we should probably give this a width and a height as well. So I'll go ahead and say that the height will be perhaps 300 and the width is going to be YG value and this will be self view frame size width. Go ahead and give this a run and right below the uh, label at the top, we should be seeing a box like so, which in fact we do. Now we could add a little bit of spacing between each of these elements on the root view, but let me actually uh, ignore that for the time being. Now that we have this container, let's add two views to this side by side. 
So I'm going to say a red view will be a UI view. The background color of this is going to be system red. And let's see, let's go ahead and actually say root view, add sub view, red view. And we need to just configure its layout. What we're going to be doing is we're going to introduce a button and that button will allow us to show or hide one of the two views and you'll see the layout dynamically adjust. So we're going to say layout is enabled, true. And the cool thing here is we're going to say flex grow is going to be one and layout flex shrink is also going to be one. Now we actually want to add this to the container, not the root view. Go ahead and give that a run and we'll see this red view take up the entirety of the container. So that makes sense, right? What is this flex grow and shrink thing we're talking about? So this is actually a concept that I was referring to taken from Flexbox. So if I actually copy and paste this whole thing right below, let's go ahead and perhaps call this blue view. We'll paste it here, here, and of course here, change up this color and give it a run, you'll see that the blue view is now equally positioned right next to said red view. And the natural question you might be asking is, well, how does it know to position it there? Well, the reason and the answer to that question is you've assigned that the weight effectively of this element is one, right? So there's two things horizontally in this container and both of them have an equal weight. So the container says, okay, well, I know these are going to be horizontal because we've actually said to uh, have the flex direction be a row. We're gonna align everything to be centered within the, within the container itself, and then the two children are these views. So we'll actually selectively, we'll add a button, and we'll selectively show or hide uh, one of the views, and we'll see what that actually results in in terms of a layout perspective. So we're gonna to want to selectively show or hide one of the views, so what I'll do is let me actually make the blue view a global here, and we'll also create a button here. So I'm gonna say our UI button is going to be a nothing more than a button with a perhaps style is what I'm looking for. And this will be the system style. I'll return said button here and let's see, we should have a way to stylize this if I'm not mistaken. So we should have a type I believe is what I'm looking for. Let's actually create it standard. So let me actually just make it like this and we'll say our button is going to have a title for both the selected state as well as the normal state. So in the normal state, we're gonna say hide blue view and in the selected state, we'll say show blue view. Now that we've got this button here, it's probably important to add it to our hierarchy and lay it out. So once again, we're gonna configure the layout with yoga. So we'll say configure, layout, layout. We're gonna say layout is enabled, is true. And we'll say layout.width is perhaps 200. And layout dot, uh, perhaps height is 50. I am also going to say on the root view here, we can say justify content and we want it to take up space either evenly or between, maybe we'll say space evenly. And let's see, so we've got this button here. We never actually uh, set a action to it. So let me add a target. We'll add a selector here, did tap button. And we'll also go ahead and add an event, touch up inside. Let's create the function that'll be called by tapping on this button, which will be this here. And let's at least give it a run and see that our button is in fact showing up. So it looks like our button isn't showing up because I made the stupid mistake of not adding it to our hierarchy. So let's see our root view, add sub view, button, go ahead and give that a run and we'll see the button down there. Probably a good idea to center this so it's not uh, the ugliest of looking at things. We'll center that and I'll also change the justification here to be space and we'll do space around and we'll get something like this. So when I tap on this, something should in fact be happening, but of course nothing is at the moment. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna flip the selected state of our button. So we're gonna say button dot is selected is button dot is selected. That's now is selected like so. Then what we wanna do is selectively hide that blue view, but also adjust the layout. 
So to do that, we already have the blue view as a global, but we'll also want the container of it, of that blue view to be a global as well, so we can refer to it. All right, looking pretty good. So we have flipped the state of that. So we're gonna say button, rather blue view is what I'm looking for, is hidden, is just going to be the inverse of that. So I'll say blue view dot is hidden. We'll run that and see what actually happens. So I'll tap it and it hides our blue view, but something weird is happening, right? So this is kind of, you know, common sense and expected. We said is, is hidden. So it does in fact hide it and our button text is changing because we're changing the selected state. But in fact, what we want to do is we want this red view to take up the entirety of the container when the blue view is not present. So how do we actually do that? Because that's the important piece. Well, it's pretty simple. We're going to say blue view dot yoga and we're going to say include this in the layout and we'll just say false here and we want this function to be used to add and remove so what i'll actually do is we can just once again flip this like so once we've flipped it we'll want to tell the container of this blue view hey go ahead and update your layout since something has changed which is our container for this blue view so we'll say uh, apply the actual layout preserving origin false go ahead and give that a run we'll tap it and just like that it's actually adjusting our particular uh, setup in terms of configuration now you'll see that it's jumping up and the reason that it's jumping up is because we are applying that entire uh, refresh to the container perhaps we can actually apply it to the view itself let's see what the difference is in that case in that case our label isn't actually uh, updated or overlapped, I should say, but we can now remove that blue view and our red view will collapse and shrink as needed. Now, how does it know to fill the whole thing? Well, because the weights are equal when the blue view is not present, aka hidden, as well as not included in the layout calculations, Yoga knows that the red view can take up the entirety of the size of its container. Now, if I were to say that the size here is two for the red view, if you were to guess, it'll take up two thirds of the size since the blue is one and the red is two, two thirds and one third respectively. So that's basically yoga in a nutshell. You can imagine that you can achieve all of this functionality with constraints, although using yoga makes your syntax and the way that the API is structured arguably cleaner. It's of course incredibly subjective. I've started using yoga a lot more over the past few months. I think it's pretty great. One really easy thing to understand mentally and visualize mentally about yoga is the fact that you are working in a grid-like system. For those of you who have ever even touched something like Bootstrap or any sort of CSS on the web with HTML, this will be very familiar and less daunting debatably versus using constraints, especially if you're going into the world of adding those constraints through a storyboard. So that is all I've got for you guys today. Yoga Kit by Facebook. I've also got a video I'm working on for Component Kit, which is, of course, heavily used uh, alongside yoga. So be on the lookout for that. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. Hit subscribe to stick around and keep us growing together. Hit that like button if you haven't done so. Let me know in the comments if you use yoga. There's several other frameworks like this out there, like Snapkit, as well as I think there's another one called Layout Kit. Let me know which one you use. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.